I go by the name of Cannabis in the realm of hip hop. I say that uh, just one of those MCs that, you know what I mean, try to give you hip hop in its rawest form. I take it back to the golden era and um, try to bring it to where, you know, where it's going. You know, soldier and hip hop. The first recorded contract that I got was with Universal MCA uh, through Group Home. And um, Group Home Productions was a production there that we had acquired through managing Lost Boys and working with them. So um, from that, like, you know, working with Cheeks and them, you know, I, you know, we used to we used to do the management thing for them. And um, you know, they put Renee out and it was up there at Island Records. And, you know, then they put the love piece and nappiness out and I was on that beach from the East Track. You know, you did that rhyme and reason thing with Raz Kai's Rock and Rock, Held the Skelter, and the rest was history. I mean the first record that I recorded was uh with this with, with this with this DJ called uh, Frankie Cutlass, you know what I'm saying? And um, you know, Frankie Cutlass, you know, let me get on that track. I put like 32 bars on that track. That was that was probably the first record I did at D&D with Frankie Cutlass. And the Tony Touch was not too long after that. Hey, I say that as far as like being impression, you know, impressionable enough to say, yo, I fucks with the music and I want to do this. Probably that would have probably been in the 80s. Rap, Kane, Rock. You know, um, Run DMC. I wanted to be able to, to, to have as much influence as them. You know, when Rakim did follow the leader and you seen the video, you, I wanted to say one day, well, you know, I want to have influence like that. I wanna, well, as with anything, I feel like, you know, drills are very important. You know what I'm saying? You got to do, you know, preliminary training, the requisite training that you have to do in order to, you know, somehow uh, find your niche or, or master whatever it is that you're aiming at. When it comes to music, if, you, if you're a producer, you make beats, then you have to, you gotta learn how to produce. You can't just have a drum machine and then call yourself a producer. You have to be able to take an artist like myself that just come in and don't give a fuck about hooks or nothing. You gotta be able to take an artist like me as a producer. You gotta be able to take an artist like me and say, all right, well, spit your shit, bitch. And I spit the rhyme and then, you know, leave the studio. Then I come back, the whole record is done. That's a producer to me. And as far as an MC, you know, naturally you would have to went through all the chambers. All of the prerequisite training, you would have to went through those things. You got to be around in the industry, you know what I mean? You would have to be around artists that either came out or doing the damn thing, you know, on an underground level. And you got to go through the training, you know what I'm saying? You got to go through the drills. And um, that, you know, the, the determination and the commitment that you show in your drills it's gonna manifest later on and you know if it's a career that you're aiming for then that will man it'll manifest as a career starting from the drills for the people that 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 been following the kid for you know 12 years um beats from the east started with like 50 bars you know 2000 that was in 90 96 96 to you know 50 bars then uh and then the first album came out, you know what I'm saying? Uh, then the second album came out, 2000 BC, there was 100 bars on there. Uh, roughly 10 years later, about nine years later, I did 1,000 bars. And, you know, now I'm working on 10,000 bars. I work at the, you know, I tell MCs, I tell them sometimes when they ask, you know, you know how, I'm, how I do this bit, so, Yo, we, we on the come up, like, what's, what's, you know, what, we, what can we do, or I just see, I see them, I see, I see they soul looking at me, asking me, what, you know, what's next? I say catalog, I think catalog is important because you might not blow on your first album, you know, you might not gain the recognition that you're looking for on your first record, but if you make a catalog and you have six, seven, eight albums, then you might blow on that fifth or sixth album. So then everybody got to go check, you know what I'm saying, the albums that came out prior. So I think catalog is very important because no one really is in complete control of when they got the most exposure or when they, when they be able to touch the most people. But once you have a catalog, you don't have to think about that no more. So the work ethic 
it's all about the catalog and the false catalog. I think last time I checked, it was like 3,500 songs that's out, that's released, you know what I'm saying, that I've had out. So 3,500 songs, you know, that's more songs than pop, you know. You know, I love pop, you know what I'm saying? I don't even know an MC that's out that's done more music that's been out, you know? So the work ethic is, the work ethic is mountain lion style. People evolving every day. Technology is evolving, it's stepping up. It's constantly, you know, revisions and new versions of, you know, what was out yesterday. So, yeah, I, I, I give you a definitely thumbs up to that. It's positive. I definitely, uh, definitely had to grow with the times, you know what I mean? And I'm thankful for the people that come out to the shows because, you know, they're not just fans. They're fans, like family, because, you know, they ride with me for so long. So, you know, naturally, you know, I would look at that like that's something that there's no there's no marketing plan or anything like that that could give you that. That's something that comes from it comes from the heart. And so, you know, I give them 100 every time. Oh, it don't matter if you're in Idaho, or you're in a village in China, or you're in a third world country somewhere barefoot. You know, it doesn't matter where you're at because of the, the standard of technology that's available now. You know, so I would just once again reiterate. You know, it might sound rhetorical, but it's where it's at. I'll reiterate catalog. You know, just make your catalog and continue to record, regardless of what you're facing. And, you know, emotion manifests thoughts, manifests actions, manifests word, manifests reality. And um, those are some of the, you know, that's like a, some of the, that's like my motto, you know, one of the things that I use to, you know, keep me committed and keep, keep me, you know, keep me with the ambition that I had. A decade ago, catalog is very important. Poisonous poems travel through walk, man. Headphones into your dome. Osteoporosis, your bones. Who's the nicest? You know, in the year two triple O. Spit turn the icicles in midair and slip it. Train your carcass, dry, rip out your heart. Write rhymes using your for my ink cartridges. Paleoanthropologist, polish the bones of rap artists. That's how I dip in my hydrochloric waters.